what would you think if I offered you and your friends a thousand dollars? You'd probably be a little suspicious, right? How about 10,000? Am I making you nervous yet? How about a hundred grand? Would you take it without asking any questions? Forget it. Let's say I got it like that and offered you and your buddies a cool mill. Surely you'd be thinking I'd want something in return. Well, what if I told you that a group of people gave $1 billion away? I'm sure you'd expect them to want something in return. And quite frankly, you'd be right. Except we don't have to use our imaginations here. During our last presidential election, Joe Biden raised $1 billion. Wait, let me say that again. He actually raised $1,044,187,000. And as feckless as that sounds, he's looking to do it again. If successful, he will have raised and spent $2 billion in the span of a few years, making both campaigns the most expensive in history. Now, I'd be negligent if I didn't point out the fact that this kind of money could have helped solve many of the problems plaguing America, such as homelessness, student debt, or low wages, which, by the way, if done, could easily win him the votes he needs. It saddens me to say that Joe Biden's greed isn't unique. Nope, not by a long shot. For those feeling bad for Trump, please, no tears. We here at AE already did a video about his owners. And sorry, folks, he's far from self-funded, with his campaign coming in a close second by raising a whopping $773 million. But back to Biden's billionaire buddies. This list includes five billionaires who Biden owes his presidency to now and most likely will in the future. That is, if he wins the next election. Let's just say these names aren't the ones you've heard. Number one, Donald Sussman. It used to be that Republican candidates were the favorite of hedge fund companies like Palomo Partners, which Donald Sussman is the founder of. But after the housing crash of 2008, it seems as though they've had a change of heart. Coincidentally, Obama made them happy enough to make large campaign contributions, which have benefited the DNC. And trust me, Biden's campaign hasn't been left out. Sussman has followed the trend by giving a jaw-dropping $81 million to various DNC candidates. So there's little doubt that he will be adding to the $1 billion Joe is looking to raise. He offered up $9 million to his campaign last time and has already pledged his loyalty to Biden this time. He's been quoted by saying, no one since FDR has accomplished as much for Americans. Yikes, what is he talking about? Anyway, although he cut back on campaign contributions in 2022, he still sees Trump as a huge threat. But it's hard to pin down whether it's his passion for racial justice or his dedication to reproductive rights. Um, maybe it's his fear of Trump's restrictions on Chinese investment that's really firing him up. Sorry, call me a cynic, but I think it's his concern for his other business, New China Capital, that might be opening up his pockets. Number two, James Simons. Okay, this guy is quite the enigma. He went from being a mathematician to a hedge fund manager, but before he made his billions, he actually worked for the NSA. Now that he's retired and has plenty of free time, he's decided to step away from his reputation as the Quant King and focus on shaping the country's political landscape. He donated a whopping $26 million to the Democrats during the last election cycle, with $7 million going to Biden alone. So clearly, he means business. In 2021, he even assembled a new lobbying team, including former Republican Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott but he paired him with former Democratic Senator John Bro. He ensures that he covers all his bases. And given that his lobbying efforts primarily revolve around tax-related issues, it's safe to say he won't probably be advocating for tax relief for the rest of us. And Biden has to watch this one. With his strong ties to Washington power, 
and a net worth of $28 billion, he might just be hedging his bets with both political parties. But maybe it doesn't even matter as long as he cuts him a check. Number three, Deborah Simons. If you're assuming she's somehow related to James, I hate to burst your bubble, but no. She's actually the daughter of Melvin Simons, the big shot behind America's largest shopping malls. And you might know her brother, the late Herb Simons, whose company owned the Mall of America. Now, this family has a long history of supporting the DNC. But Deborah Simons and her sister, Cynthia, have a special bone to pick with Mike Pence, Trump's former running mate, which seems to be the driving force behind her support for Biden. So much so that Deborah generously donated 6.1 to Biden's campaign, while her sister chipped in an extra $1.75 million for good measure. Their hate for Pence runs so deep, they probably invested in voodoo dolls, given their particular disdain for his meddling with Planned Parenthood in Indiana. But whether Deborah will continue funding Biden and the Democrats since they didn't take action again on this issue? Well, that's anyone's guess. Plus, with Pence not running as Donald's VP this time around, those voodoo dolls might have been put away. Number four, George Marcus. Mr. Marcus is the proud owner of a California-based property company called Essex Property Trust, with him owning 262 apartment complexes, which contain 62,000 units. So safe to say he dabbles in real estate. While he gave $4 million to Joe's last campaign, he's also been known to fundraise for the president as well, which did bring the campaign scrutiny given the donors who attended his last event. But his support isn't as solid as most. Even the last time he's quoted to say, Biden is someone I've known for a while. You're a bit more comfortable with people that you know. But he's mature and all that stuff. I'm not sure he's my candidate, but there are a lot of smart people who are running. Not exactly an FDR comparison, right? So while this one's up in the air, last time Biden's team was able to convince him to support Joe after months of pestering. So I'm sure they're already on it. Number five, Kenneth Duda. Duda is the chief technology officer at Arista Networks, a company which provides cloud networking solutions. And surprise, surprise, wouldn't you know that one of their clients includes the federal government? Which makes me wonder, is his $3 million to Joe's campaign more of a tax write-off or a business investment? Maybe it's both. But I'll be honest, Duda isn't exactly a billionaire, and I might face some criticism for including him on this list. But he's among Biden's top donors, and with a net worth of $309 million, and connections to the White House, I think he's got a shot of increasing his fortune. Besides, I couldn't resist highlighting him as a prime example of how the pay-to-play system works in Washington. Unlike George Marcus, Biden's team probably doesn't even need to ask for his support, with him already knowing where his bread is buttered. Thanks for watching this far into the video. And if you like this kind of commentary, please consider subscribing. Between the algorithm not exactly promoting this type of content, we can use all the support we can get. Hopefully knowing exactly who's funding political campaigns has been helpful, as it may shed some light on why those in charge are making the decisions they are. Although I'm sure it's no surprise to anyone that the interests of the rich takes priority and what keeps them rich comes first. It's this twisted power dynamic that keeps thwarting all the will of the majority, especially when it comes to health care reform or addressing homelessness and gun violence. After all, when you're given a billion dollars, you definitely owe a favor or two. Mm -hmm.